On today's episode, Elon Musk hints at a working Tesla bot Android for AI Day Part 2, the real reason Tesla is laying off their staff, Panasonic begins manufacturing the 4680 battery, phantom braking is becoming a big problem, and Elon confirms that Tesla will finally be improving their service department. So let's get going. Elon Musk has delayed the 2022 edition of Tesla's AI Day, but he's doing it for good reason. Elon seems to believe that by the new planned date of September 30th, the company will have a functioning prototype of their Optimus humanoid robot. If we remember, last AI Day on August 19th, 2021 was by far the most information-dense presentation that we have ever seen from the Tesla crew. This was not dumbed down for public consumption. It was high-level discussion of how Tesla's full self-driving system actually works from the camera inputs to the vector space to the neural networks. This was also the day when we first saw Tesla's prototype of the Dojo supercomputer. Again, with a thorough technical explanation, and then Elon pulled a just one more thing moment from the Steve Jobs playbook and dropped a humanoid robot on us. Well, really he just showed us a person in a onesie that kind of looked like a robot, but the main takeaway was that Tesla was serious about building their own autonomous Android. This one was not a technical discussion, it was purely conceptual and hypothetical because the product did not actually exist yet. But the general idea seemed to be that Tesla could just lift parts from their vehicles like robotic actuators and batteries and FSD computers and then repurpose their existing artificial intelligence system to focus on labor-related tasks. But for AI Day Part 2, Tesla might just have a working prototype of the Optimus robot ready to go. Elon hasn't revealed much else when asked if the prototype will be anything like the sleek black and white mock-up that was on display at the Cyber Rodeo in Texas, Elon said no, which probably means that this first unveiling will be a work in progress, probably something like what C-3PO looked like back when Anakin was still building him in his mom's shed, just all kind of janky with exposed parts everywhere, but still functional. Anyway, aside from the robot, we don't really know what Elon might have in store for this event other than his promise of, quote, so many cool updates. So we'll likely hear about the same topics as last year's event, mainly FSD and Dojo. Since we already know from last year how these systems work, Tesla engineers should be able to jump straight into explaining the progress that has been achieved in the meantime hopefully with new and more defined timelines. Our two biggest questions going into this event will be, can Tesla achieve level 4 autonomy within the next year, like Elon Musk has claimed, and has Tesla started using Dojo to train their neural networks? If not, then how soon will it be ready? We had been teased that Dojo might become the first supercomputer to break the exascale and perform at one exaflop of computing power, but that record was just achieved a few days ago by a different computer called Frontier, built by Oak Ridge National Laboratory. That basically means that the computer can perform 1 billion billion operations per second. The implications of the Tesla bot are pretty wide-ranging. Over the course of developing this labor robot, Tesla will likely make huge strides towards solving artificial general intelligence, which is like creating a computer brain that can function as well as a human brain when it comes to complex functions like learning and problem solving. The same as last year, the purpose of Tesla AI Day is not to show off new products or advertise to consumers. The vast majority of people won't even understand half of what's being said, if they're lucky. This is about Tesla showing off their development process to other industry insiders and hopefully impressing enough hardcore AI developers 
to bring new talent over to the Tesla AI team. Basically, they're trying to poach the best and brightest away from top tier operations like Google. Stay tuned for our coverage of AI Day 2022, when we will again do our best to distill extremely technical jargon into relatively easily understandable terms. And you can join one of our live watch parties in our Discord server, link down below in the description. Tesla CEO Elon Musk caused a stir recently when a leaked email sent to Tesla executives revealed the company would be reducing the workforce by 10%. Elon also said that he was having a super bad feeling about the economy. Understandably, this required some clarification because that first message came off as pretty scary. And Elon thankfully did with a follow-up email to all employees sent out soon after the original message. The CEO clarified that the headcount reduction and accompanying hiring freeze would be among the salaried staff only not the hourly workers who assemble vehicles and key components like battery packs. In fact, he mentioned hiring would continue for hourly workers. Obviously, there's a lot going on here, so we have to keep in mind that Tesla just came off of two straight years of unprecedented growth. The company has been going straight up like a rocket ship since April 2020, and it would make sense that during the good times when money is literally pouring in like a tsunami wave, they might have gotten a little carried away with hiring new staff. Tesla currently employs about 100,000 people worldwide, and given the pandemic situation, the company likely hired on people for dedicated remote work who never had a space in a Tesla office to begin with. Now, we're in a much different place economically, and Tesla has hit their first major hurdle in two years. The Giga Shanghai shutdown was a massive blow to company productivity, and the macroeconomic environment in the United States is not looking great. The entire market sank like a stone beginning in April, with Tesla stock taking a particularly hard hit. Some people think that the market has already started to bounce back and rally, Others would tell you that the bottom has yet to come. Elon seems to be planted on the more skeptical side of the equation and has fears that a long-lasting recession will sink in. So he's working to shore up the company now in case things do get worse. One easy way to start is by eliminating remote workers. Some people would call this too harsh on Elon's part, but if you have to thin out the herd, this is a reasonable way to do it. If people aren't dedicated enough to the company to at least put on pants and come to the office, then to hell with them. This is a pretty normal thing for any company to do, especially when anticipating a market fall. And decreasing headcount among salaried workers by 10% will save the company almost a billion dollars per year, according to Goldman Sachs analyst Mark Delaney. Ultimately, the executives at Tesla have one responsibility, and that is the financial well-being of their company. Addressing inefficiencies in staffing to head off potential lean times is right from the same business playbook as every other company. Tesla isn't unique in doing this sort of thing and in diverting cash away from desk jobs and into the factory production workers. That sounds like a very equitable direction to me. Panasonic has announced that their first production samples of the 4680 battery from a pilot line in Japan have been shipped to Tesla for approval. This should be the prelude to full mass production of the cell by Panasonic next year. The plan right now is for Panasonic to begin full-scale manufacturing of the new Tesla cell in March of 2023. This is the beginning of the company's next fiscal year. That first wave of production will happen at the plant in Wakayama, Japan, but will eventually shift to a North American plant, the location of which has yet to be decided, but we have a strong indication that it will be relatively close by to Giga Texas in either Kansas or Oklahoma. As far as we know, Panasonic will be manufacturing the 4680 cell exclusively for Tesla, so they're clearly bullish on Tesla's production continuing to grow at a fast pace. 
Tesla has been ordered to respond to an inquiry from the NHTSA regarding the increasing number of phantom braking complaints being reported to the agency. In a 14-page letter dated from May 2022, but only recently published, NHTSA has asked a series of questions regarding the 758 phantom braking complaints it received, and Tesla is compelled to respond by the 20th of June. The letter itself is basically unreadable, just pages and pages of jargon, but the gist of it is that the rate of phantom braking complaints has actually accelerated over the past few months, and now the agency is freaking out. The request is for all documents and telemetry data from all model year 2021 and 2022 Tesla Model 3s and Ys in the United States, which could be nearly a million cars. Of course, these would be the pure vision vehicles that were manufactured without radar sensors for autopilot. According to the very strongly worded letter, the NHTSA can take legal action against Tesla if they fail to submit the requested documentation by the due date with a maximum fine of about $115 million in total. So it doesn't look like Tesla has much of a choice but to hand over the information that the NHTSA is looking for unless Elon's new team of street fighting lawyers can do something about it. This should be fun to watch. It's no secret that Tesla's service department has always been a thorn in the side of an otherwise great company. They make an excellent product, and in ideal circumstances, an electric car will hardly ever require maintenance. But sometimes things go wrong, and that's where Tesla has traditionally kind of fallen apart. For example, I've had my Tesla for four years and only had one major issue when the power converter in my vehicle stopped working and required a replacement part. It was supposed to take a week for the part to be shipped in since we didn't have any in Canada, but ended up taking almost three weeks. Fortunately, I was given a Model S loaner vehicle, so I didn't mind the three-week upgrade, but it wasn't ideal. According to Elon Musk, he is working to change that for customers in North America. In a tweet over the weekend, Elon said his goal is for two-thirds of owners in Canada and the United States to experience same-day service with no wait. Elon did not specify how he is going to achieve that standard, but the obvious option is to grow the number of service centers across North America, Tesla's website indicates there are currently 174 service centers in North America with 19 in Canada and 155 operating in the United States. Another way to improve service is to grow the mobile service fleet. Tesla's mobile rangers are an extremely underrated and underappreciated part of Tesla's service model and can handle the vast majority of owner requested repairs all from the convenience of your home. Tesla currently employs 1,372 mobile service vehicles, and this is a service I've also been able to use on occasionally and personally would love to see this department grow. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.